like three words to describe stunt work. Three words, like three words. Um, dangerous. Concentration. Um, no fear. That's four actually. So fear. Three words. <laughs> Only three words. Um, exciting, fulfilling, and creative. Three words to describe stuff. Exciting, dangerous, and challenging. Three words to describe stuff. Three words. Challenging, exciting, challenging. In 1903, the movie The Great Robbery employed a man named Frank Hannaway as a train-robbing bandit. In the course of filming Chase, Hannaway fell off a horse for the camera without suffering permanent injury. In effect, Hannaway became the first movie stuntman. Stunt work didn't start out as a profession. The assistant director used to go to the front gate in the morning and say, you, can you ride a horse? And if you said yes, you want to make five bucks? Sure. From 1910 onwards, American audiences developed a taste for action movies, which producers then replicated the formulas of into success serials. These mostly Western-themed scripts required a lot of extras, such as for galloping cavalry, a band of Indians, or a fast-riding sheriff's posse all of whom needed to proficiently ride, shoot, and look right on camera. As the industry developed in the West Coast around Hollywood, California, the first accepted professional stunt performers were clowns and comedians. In the early days of silent films, actors like Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, and the Keystone Cops thought that stunts were just part of the job. The 1923 classic Safety Last, when you see Harold Lloyd dangling off that clock on a skyscraper, that's really him, and he's really hanging there. And then came a rodeo cowboy named Yakima Kanat. He was the first to make doing stunt work a speciality. It was his death-defying stunt, done in John Ford's stagecoach, and then again in Zorro's fighting legions, that made Kanat a legend. Following the Second World War, stunt technology, in tandem with all sorts of production techniques, developed at pace. By the mid-1960s, most of the modern stunt technology that is used today was in regular operation on the lots of the big Hollywood studios. These technologies included things like air rams and bullet squibs. Airbags also developed, allowing for greater and greater falls to be undertaken by specialists in that form of stunt work. It may have been 50 years ago, there were a lot of ex-boxers and ex-wrestlers who came in and thought that it was just about being able to throw a punch. We understand so much about, we have to, about digital technology, about film, about uh, green screen, post-production. All these things are there to, to, to make things better. And the stunt coordinators are very creative on, 
on making some incredible action sequences. It's, it's not like the old school stunt. It's a very high tech industry now. Really need to know quite what you're doing. What was the prep? You know, have you been? You know, you need to wreck yet. Is the location okay? You know, is it, are you possible? Is it possible to get people there for safety? You know, if um, you're jumping off a cliff into the sea, is it accessible for the safety element of it? Can the safety boat get to you? Can the divers? I need to talk to the director first of all. Then I talk to the first assistant director. Then I talk to the special effects man. Then I talk to costume. If we're having a fire burn, I need to talk to costume about that. I need to talk to the firemen. I need to talk to safety people. And the whole thing begins to go like this. You know, so one little, one little stunt of just jumping off a cliff, say into water, it, you know, it, it involves a lot of people. There's a risk. Obviously the risk assessments have to be done, the method statements have to be done. There's a, a huge amount of paperwork that now needs to be put into place. So people think stuntmen are all, oh, they're like pirates. We're not. We're part of a team and if you can't be part of a team, you're never going to be a good stuntman. Because sometimes you think, I'm going to be the guy who's going to do the spectacular stunt. I'm going to get the money and I'm going to be diving out of the window on fire. And then the director says, you know what? That guy's a better double. <sighs> okay. But you have to go, okay. So I'll go up and I'll be his safety guy for him. And when he's d down on the ground and on fire, I'll put him out. You know, we've all had some sort of um, background in the media. Um, and so we, we have that. It takes a long time, um, you know, to become a kickboxer or to, to do your riding or to do your sub aqua or to do your parachuting, swimming. It's a very technical profession that you, you don't just have to be able to jump off of something and land right and not hurt yourself, but you might have to do it 18 times. You might have to do it, you know, once and it's an amazing thing and everybody claps and the director goes, oh, the window should have been rolled down. Oh, I got to do it again. I used to do some physical exercise before we start working. So a bit of training in the morning, breakfast, and then uh, off to costume or hair and makeup if you're required on camera. And then there'll be a rehearsal period, uh, time for the film crew to set up for the stunt with the cameras and the lights. Um, and then, yeah, shoot. So some stunts can take a week to set up and some stunts can take 10 minutes to set up. Usually is that it's 80 or 90 hours a week, can be. Um, some, you know, people, and I, it's understandable, they work 40 hours a week and, oh my God, it's Friday, you know, it's been 40 hours and, and, and I get that, but we do 40 hours sometimes by Wednesday. You know, we're one of the departments to start the movie right at the beginning. As I said, sometimes it's eight to 12 weeks rehearsals for us. Um, then we'll start shooting, depending on how long the shoot is, you could be on that movie for eight, nine months, sometimes longer. a lot to be done there's a lot of preparation and as much as you can watch the screen and in two seconds that's happened you may have prepped that for a month just that one thing and obviously in a movie or in some movies there's a huge amount of stunts that you have to prep and so it's um, that's why sometimes it takes up to 10 months to make a movie because you need maybe half of that just to prep it and I think that people don't realise that. <laughs> they definitely don't realise that. You know, they just watch and think, oh God, I can do that. But then of course, there's the experience and everything else that comes with that. Every job is different. Every job is different. Every car chase, every fall from a window, every time you're set on fire, something is different. So you have to be adaptable. It's adapt or die. You have to be at a level of fitness, especially if you're like myself, an acrobatical performer who, who bases a lot of their work on my gymnastic background. 
But yeah, you, you have to be at peak physical fitness um, and ready to perform at different times of day, um, different types of costume, different types of scenarios. Uh, and film sets, obviously, they're always changing. So there's always that, you know, a high level of risk there. And you need to understand what the director wants. You need to be able to translate what he wants to do it as safely as possible and give him something on screen which works for the script. Not something that you want to do because you have to be good at it, you have to give it to the director because that's what he wants. I think that, uh, well, I always joke on some of the sets that I'm on about, uh, I wanted to be in Hollywood, you know, we end up in like this 150 year old mold infested barn somewhere with uh, black widows crawling around and stuff, you know. It is not always glamorous, or you're in freezing water, or you're, you know, wherever you are. You know, there's nothing you can do about that. People forget about that, of course, because you see one scene and, you know, you can be in, in, in water maybe the whole day. And so people don't get that either, you know, they don't understand the challenge of, of that. Um, being cold and being away from home isn't always great. You know, sometimes you, you leave for a job and you don't come home for some months, which, um, which isn't always great that you have to keep your head on because you have to maintain the safety that you, the same safety on Friday uh, is on Monday. And a lot, another thing that a lot of people don't know is the stunts tend to happen at five o'clock on, uh, on, on Saturday morning when they're trying to get out of there before the sun comes up so people can go have a weekend. It's not at, uh, you know, at 1 p.m. on Friday when everybody's wide awake and ready to go. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it can be challenging and a lot of people don't get that. Um, it's just unbelievable, isn't it? You know, you get to be the superhero, but not have to do any of the other hard acting or the or the or the press stuff. You know, you get to put the costume on and and pretend for them two minutes, achieve something pretty amazing, make someone look very good, and then get to go home again and you know, almost like a silent assassin. Just the people in the industry know what you've done and what you've achieved that day, but you know, to everybody else, it just looks like the actor is amazing. So I like that, you know, fooling the audience. I think it's great. The first thing that springs to mind for me is the actors that say they do all their own stunts. <laughs> when actually they don't. Um, and that's disappointing for us to hear that. If you go and see a Bond movie, or you go and see Saving Private Ryan, or you go and see Superman, or you, a huge percentage of that movie is stunts. And we should be acknowledged for that. I, I guess we're the, the unknown heroes, and the actors take all the glory, but they never, and I can honestly say never, not even Jackie Chan would do all his own stunts. Thank you, Hollywood, for all those years teaching me so many things and also make me a little bit famous. <laughs> and I thank you, my, my family, my wife, Joanne, my son, JC, a special Jackie Chan stunt team. This year is the Jackie Chan stunt team 40 years anniversary. <laughs> and all oh, the friends, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. He's a brilliant fighter. He's amazing, obviously, we know that, as Bruce Lee was and, and the other guys. But there may be something where they leap off a building, leap onto something and then drop down or fall or they may be on wires, which they would do that themselves, but they may run out in front of a car and the car sort of hits them, they roll off and they continue running and fighting. Well, that part of it, if the director's got any sense, would be a stunt double just jumping in, uh, you know, but taking over uh, when they cut do the bit in front of the car and then the actor takes over for the rest of the scene. 
because they can't afford to allow the actor to be injured because their production shuts down until they're well again or their bones have healed. We do action all the time. We're not interested in dialogue. We're not interested in the love story. We do action and that's what we do best. And so if the director will listen to us, then that's a, a vital part of our job. Now go on back and keep preparing because I want to keep you around. Well, it should be exciting. But uh, one thing I'd like to know, are world records worth the risk? It's obvious to A.J. Bakunas that it is. We'll see. And the only time that stunt people ever seem to get mentioned occasionally is if somebody has died. Mr. Bakunas died at 9.45 a.m. this morning. Often accidents happen to us um, because we're on the receiving end of something going wrong. So, you know, everyone else, if there's a big explosion and we're in the middle of it, we're protected with the suits and everything from the explosion. But there you have the first AD telling everybody to get back. You, get, you must get back beyond that line, way, way back over there, way back over there. This is the danger zone. You need to be outside there where it's safe. And you're standing there thinking, yes, I'm right in the middle of the danger zone. Everybody else is out of the way, but here I am. Um, and if special effects or wire riggers get it wrong, uh, the wire snaps because they didn't use a new cable or anything, explosions too big, then we'll be on the receiving end. And as you know, with Olivia, you know, there's, there was her accident. Uh, it's, it can happen, it can happen. And that normally performers get injured when someone else is negligent and they're the ones on the receiving end. I would say that is what happens most of the time, as opposed to we get it wrong. because of that percentage that we have, you are going to get a smack over, over, over time. You cannot avoid getting a smack. So uh, that's an unpleasant part of it. I think an unpleasant part of it also is that producers and production tend to treat us on a much lower scale than actors and I've never seen us as being on a lower scale than actors. We are there to make the actors look good, but we are not cannon fodder. You understand cannon fodder? So we have a contribution to make and sometimes that contribution is not taken into account with some producers because they think I'm paying these guys to crash through. I don't care what happens to them. And that's not what it's all about. You also as a stunt coordinator or second unit director have to be able to say no. That's a huge key because when there's a possibility of injury or you know somebody getting hurt or, or whatever's going on, um, some people just don't like to say no. They just don't like to be the one to, to raise the hand and go, this shouldn't be. And we know that from a lot of bad injuries that have happened to people. You do, you do risk your life and your livelihood and you know everyone wants to go home to their family and has got family to support. Um, and ours is a very dangerous sport. We know exactly what we've signed up for and 
we try and make it as safe as possible and most of the time touch wood we do because there is a huge you know the guys are very experienced and they work very hard and everyone works as a team to make it as safe as possible um in the grand scheme of things as dangerous as our job is and think about some of the things that we do day in day out there's not that many injuries but when there is they seem you know they can be very 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 bad just due to the nature of of what we do and The stunt center has gone through a window. Severe injury. The stunt actor was airborne through the building. The Walking Dead is a critically acclaimed horror television series, but it's what happened in real life on the set this week that would best be described as horrific. We had someone fall about 25 feet off of a balcony straight onto concrete. We need an ambulance ASAP. Do you know if he's bleeding from anywhere? Yes, it's coming out of his nose. Is he able to talk to anybody? No. It's a, it's a brotherhood, it's a family, it's a sisterhood. Um, and, you know, when somebody goes down or, or gets injured, you all feel it because you all understand that that could be you on the next job or or your friend or, or something like that. You don't have to know the person to, to feel what they're going through. I've got many friends that unfortunately are injured and will never do this job again. My mom, she, of course now, she hates it. Well, she doesn't hate stunts, but she hates people that don't do stunts properly. Um, she's obviously scared that it's dangerous. Um, but she's kind of used to it, because she always done things that are dangerous. I was a professional fighter, and then um, I used to race motorbikes and ride motorbikes. So she's kind of used to it. But I think every time I do something, she rolls her eyes. And she's now, at now she's scared. Um, so I would just say for people in general to know uh, that, that it's a respected profession uh, to the level of somebody could lose their life and, and to treat it as such and to think about it as such. Because it's, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very proud of what we do and what we accomplish. Um, and yet we all feel the loss or feel it when somebody gets hurt.
There are 60 films the Academy has recognized. Tonight is for the composers and the computer animators, the set designers and the screenwriters, the sound mixers and the makeup masters. But tonight is also for the people who love these movies, who bought a ticket, who took a ride, who got lost in the stories that inspire us, the stories that motivate us, that remind us to be brave in the face of danger, to chase impossible dreams, and to stand up for our rights. Tonight, on this stage, we have come together to celebrate and hopefully to fall in love with moving pictures all over again. Well, I didn't think that we would be so shunned in, and by what I mean by shunned is, you know, there are awards like the Oscars, the Golden Globes, and, and the massive big award ceremonies and huge industries behind them. And not one of them recognised stunts or, you know, stunt action or stunt choreography or good coordination. We have our own stunt awards, which is, you know, a, an American based company called Taurus, which is supported by Red Bull. So we get our own award system and stuff, but people lose their lives, people get paralysed for the act of storytelling. Uh, and it would just be really nice if we got recognised for that instead of shunned and forgotten about, which is the current feeling uh, amongst our industry peers with the stunt industry. I think that with modern, modern filming, and especially now, like the, the action design from films and stunts, I don't know why they're, they're overlooked because they work crucially with other departments, like with visual effects departments and it's not like old school stunt people. I wrote the letter to BAFTA because I felt criminally left out our department from every other aspect of filmmaking, whether it be camera, whether it be makeup, hair, music, sound, special effects, visual effects, etc., etc., etc. You know, special effects get awards and hair and makeup get awards, which and, and so they should, totally so they should, but sometimes it is frustrating when you get overlooked and you just think, well, you at least want to be on the same um, playing field as everyone else to get recognition. I think that would be um, a nice thing for, for stump players to get and coordinators. and. Um, and I think that's the big problem is that there, there are a few select people that are in positions of power that say we don't want to lose that mystique or that mystery um, and yet those are the same people that will benefit from every single, I don't know about you know, BAFTA but on the Academy Awards, every time they play best picture uh, you know, for, for a snippet or a trailer of that, 99% of the time it's got stunt people involved in the trailer. What sells their movie? If they show a clip in the cinema of an action movie, they're gonna show all the stunt stuff. They always do. Oh, it's an action movie, okay? And even when the action has been cut out of the main, I've worked on a movie, I worked on a movie called Entrapment years ago with Sean Connery, and we did a whole car chase on it, which they decided wasn't right for the movie in the end. But when they showed the trailer in the movie house, there was bits of the car chase because people Oh, it's a you know, it's an action movie. It's Sean Connery. In fact, it all went. They didn't do it in the end. The director thought that it was not applicable. She sometimes they, you know, even at the Baftas or at the Oscars, they show a fantastic action sequence. So we all know who's done it, but um, but we don't get the recognition, and that that cannot be right. You know, I think there wouldn't be anybody that um, you would talk to that would think that it, that's okay because it simply isn't. You know, and what a shame, terrible shame. <laughs> It's a little weird when they have, uh, you know, two awards for sound design and two awards for visual effects, but they can't do a single award for a stunt coordinator. And even with the excuse or the reasoning that, oh, we don't want to take away from the actor, so we don't want a stunt person award uh, to take away from the mystique or whatever, that's fine. But if it is the motion picture arts and sciences, then the art and the science that a stunt coordinator brings, which is designing from the ground up, uh, how the action happens. I mean, look at Mad Max the other year that was that was up for a Best Picture award, and 90% of that movie was the action. 
the stunt coordinator there uh, designed every, all the action, um, shot 80% of it uh, himself, you know, and, and this is a clear case that should have been uh, up for an Academy Award, among many others. It's a, it's a shame because Mad Max, oh, Olivia worked on Mad Max, and that was, that won so many awards, but the whole film, from start to finish, is stunts. All the way through, like all the way through, and it wins all of the awards for best of, um, for everything. It won everything. I think twelve Oscars or, or whatever it was, but no recognition for stunts. And they they made that movie. If there was no stunts in that movie, there would be no film. So you know, it's crazy. I love that film. I loved um, the team, it was great of people. Um, I loved the place we shot in, in Namibia, the desert. Uh, it was just a crazy experience. We all lived there for um, six, seven months. So, and it's in a small town in the middle of nowhere. So, and the film was mainly stunt people. There was a, a handful of actors, like the main ones that you see in Mad Max, but everyone else and all the other sort of small actors and performers are all stunt people. And so it was fun because there were so many stunts um, and all proper stunts. There wasn't much um, computer generated. Response from BAFTA I got. Eight years ago I wrote two years in a row I got no response whatsoever and I sent the letter to all the board members of BAFTA nobody even acknowledged my letter including Sir Richard Attenborough which I was very disappointed about uh, I wrote again last year and this time uh, I got a letter back from them saying we have too many categories and the awards and stunts are come under the blanket of special effects and we sometimes mention them in special effects but there is there will be no award for stunt people and I wrote the letter to BAFTA to say exactly the same as Jim and I got the same reply back there isn't enough time to add another category and when I watched the BAFTAs this time Stephen Fry was hosting them and I really like him I think he's very good but he talked and talked and talked and went on a bit too long at times at the beginning of it he, he, you know he tried to be funny and sometimes he was sometimes he wasn't but I remember thinking all he needed to do was cut that down over the period of the whole show and just cut three minutes out of it and there you could have a stunt category or four minutes however long it takes you know that so that's an excuse it's an absolute excuse and i pointed out that in america the academy has no award for stunt people only one oscar has been awarded to a stunt man which was for services to the stunt business not for a particular movie a man called yakima kanat who i worked with in the 60s one of the first things he learned was that uh, movies should move and he's spent his life ever since making sure they do. Before movies could even talk, he'd already performed some incredible stunts that have since become legendary. And by the time he'd made his reputation as the greatest stuntman of all time, he'd devised special safety devices and stunt techniques that are still used by the men who make up the profession to which he gave so much. I'm very proud to present it to him, and I'm proud to tell you what he'd never say himself. He deserves it. His name is Yakima Kanat. Thank you. I'd like to thank the uh, Academy. Uh, not so much. Not so much uh, for what I have enjoyed doing my, all these years myself and hope to continue doing, but in the name of all those stuntmen and women who kept defying busted bones 
bastion heads to make pictures more real and reality more picturesque. They're a great gang, and I'm honored you chose me to honor them. I think we've all written and asked and because we still are, you know, we're not recognised um, within the industry also with the, you know, with the Oscars, which is just mind blowing given that any movie, you know, big action movie involves sometimes, you know, up to a hundred stunt people. And if it wasn't for that action and if it wasn't for that, you know, that on screen excitement. You know, I don't think some of the movies that we've all watched would be the same. I don't mind being the guy in the background. People say, oh, don't you, don't you mind that you don't get, you know, a big hurrah? No. It's much more important to me that if the guy's on the set, the people who know what stunts, what's happening, whether it be the riggers or the carpenter or what, if they come up at the end of the day and say, that was good, mate, that means much more to me than 50 members of the public who don't know what they're looking at and don't know what, how, how it was done, come up and go, oh, fantastic. Yeah, okay, you don't know what you're looking at. But if the carpenter does, the rigger does, the camera operator does, and those are the people that it makes, makes it worthwhile for. But now, in this, in this atmosphere of awards, everybody seems to be getting awards and now we we feel that we should be a little bit less invisible now because everybody knows about stuntmen the internet has opened up a whole vista of knowledge about what goes on in our business so we are no longer the people behind the scenes very often we're right up front there and, the, and, the, and they're making EPK f films about the making of the film and they show the stuntmen and we get interviewed and so on and so forth. I mean, I think there's lots of actors out there that um, are always praising stunt guys and their stunt doubles and I mean, Chris Hemsworth's amazing to me, he's always great and he always is always wanting me to, um, you know, do more and uh, anything he can do to help. He's like, yeah, just let me know and I'll help, you know, he's, you know, he definitely, um, recognizes it and appreciates what we do and I think a lot of a lot of actors do Matt Damon um, Keanu Reeves there's so many actors out there that, that really do what do I say I, you know what I'm gonna say I've never done a stunt in my life <laughs> stunt men do stunts actors don't do stunts I don't do stunts um, Chad Stahelski does stunts um, I didn't do everything you saw up there by the way <laughs> um, but in, in accepting this, I, I, I'd like to say that um, I feel like I'm, 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 I'm accepting it with everyone who I've ever worked with. Uh, I guess for me, starting with the running and jumping started really with uh, Point Break, and I worked with Glenn Wilder. Um, and if you know him, he just, he was just like, you can do it, you can do it, just go there and go and run and jump and fall and jump and fall. Just do it, man, go! And, uh, and, um, and then I got to do a film called Speed. And I worked with Gary Himes and, uh, and Brian Smurfs. And, uh, yeah. And then I got to work with Larry and Andrew Wachowski on a film called The Matrix. Um, yeah. And um, this past year, um, The Matrix Reloaded and, and Matrix Revolutions came out, and I got to work with Ari Rondell, and um, he did some extraordinary, extraordinary work. I, and, and again, and this was just again where, you know, working with Chad and working with Ari, again, I got to tell more of the story. I got to, I got to bring the, um, my role. I, you know, they didn't have to cut away. I was able to do as much as I could do to tell the story. And so I, I would just like to say thank you. Thank you. Um, and 
let's just keep doing some crazy, wacky stuff and telling great stories and being safe. And um, thank you so much. It's, thank you. But I guess we can only keep doing what the guys are doing, sending letters to different affiliations and you know the Academy Awards, BAFTA, and keep trying, keep plugging away and not give up. And at some point, someone's going to stand up and say, come on, guys. Um, I think this should be changed. Who knows? I mean, we just got to keep, keep trying. I mean, I think that happens in every walk of life that some things that people aren't happy about, but if they keep fighting for it. Eventually it will, if it's meant to be, it will, it will happen. And I believe it is meant to be. I believe, I'm, I don't think we're asking for something that we don't deserve. Batman is definitely a standout movie for me. I've always, you know, as a kid, everyone wants to be Batman. And, um, when that job came up, just before that job came up, I had a bad injury, um, and I got a call from from uh, the coordinator, Tom Struthers, and said, "We may be looking for you to um, potentially double Batman if you want to come in and, and see us." And I instantly felt like I was getting better with my injury because it was like in my head, I have to get fit for this job because it's a once in a lifetime thing that may never come again. So, um, so that was definitely a standout job for me, the locations, I mean we filmed in LA, we filmed in uh, Pittsburgh, New York, I was working with a great team, um, just everything about that job was a real amazing experience and something to, to tick off the list. Um, and on top of the Manhattan Bridge I did the shot, the helicopter 360 shot with 300 feet up um, in the bat suit and it was when I watched it on screen it was just like that was amazing. Some sometimes you think of like stunts you do, but that is a standout thing for me. Even though I was just standing there, I was up there on my own, 300 feet, helicopter, 360 shot, and it was just I was like, this is amazing. This is why I got into this for sure. Um, so that definitely stands out. Um, and then Thor, I guess when I properly worked with um, Chris Hemsworth properly after I I met him on Snow White and the Huntsman, the first one. Um, but only the last couple of weeks. It was literally after I finished Batman in New York, I, I came back and jumped onto that show for the last three weeks. Um, and then we did Thor together and I doubled him on Thor. And then he asked me to be in his contract and to go with him and do all of his movies with him. And I've had a great run with him so far. I think now best part of five years. Um, and I jumped with show to show with him and great relationship and he looks after me. And that's definitely a, um, another highlight standout for me, my career. Patekti Hollywoodo filmos, tai yra turbūt bet, bet kurio kaskadininko, bet kurio aktoriaus, bet kurio kito kinė dirbančio žmogaus turbūt yra svajonė. Ir aš negaliu pasakyti, kad aš tai siek, tuo, siek, tuo siekiau labai, sakykime, aš noriu tenais, aš noriu tenais. Be abejo, mes kiekvienas turim širdį to, kad jo, norėčiau, va, tas didelis filmas, va, didelį aktoriai, va, kaip ten viskas gražu, bet sakau, Tokios sėkimybės nebuvo, tai ta ateina natūraliai. Tu vis laiką, tu nori, tu kiekvien, kiekvien, kiekvieną dieną, kiekvienam kinė, tu tampi vis geresnės prasliniškai, kažką sužinai. Tuose filmuose tu pamatai vėlgi kitą, pas, kitą pasaulio pusę, vėlgi kaip kiti žmonės dirba, kaip dirba kiti profesionalai. Ne tik, sakykime, tie Europos. Bet jo, matyt, vėlgi mūsų kelias į Hollywoodą, turbūt atėjo iš lūpų į lūpas. Tie žmonės, kurie atvažiuodavo, atveždavo kiną į Lietuvą, matydavo, kaip dirbame mes, tada kviesdavosi mus dirbti kažkur kažkokį kitą užsienę šalį, kadangi į Lietuvą tie Hollywoodo filmai tokie dideli, sakykime, netvažiuoja, tai nuvažiavos kažkur į kitą šalį, Patenkia didesnį filmą, kur dirba didesni žmonės, jie pamato vėl tavo darbą, tada tave pasikvečia vėl į kitą filmą. Tai po biškį, po biškį šokinėdami iš vieno į kitą filmuką, iš lūpų į lūpas, mus pradėjo kviesti į didelius filmus.
Kiekviena filme, koks jis be būtų, jis, jis būtų ne, ne, ne daug triukų būtų, bet tu jame, jeigu kažką padarai įdomaus, jisai, tu sumėl noro pažiūrėsi tą filmą tam, kad pamatyti, kaip tai atrodo. My favorite movie. Well, actually, two or three. One of my, actually, funnily enough, I've mentioned it's not a movie. One of my favorite jobs is a job I did with Jim in Namibia, um, which was great. I had to, um, it was a Volvo commercial, and I had to drive a car that towed a, a, um, a glider up over a canyon. Um, so that was great. But um, my favorite movies, I, um, I guess Titanic, I have to say that because um, I was very lucky to have the opportunity to double Kate Winslet and then went on to double her in five or six movies. But, you know, that was challenging, asking about challenging roles and challenging moments and challenging pictures. I think that was one of them, but it was one of my favorite. And um, it was one of the very few movies that um, when I read the script, that actually I was excited about the, the prospect of being a double and actually working on it because often you can read a script and it doesn't really give you, you know, it doesn't really sell it to you, I suppose. You think, well, you know, we're gonna have to really kind of make things happen for this. But it was one of the few scripts that, that was really, was great. And it, as it turned out, luckily, <laughs> it turned out to be a great movie, thankfully. So that was good, a long time ago now, but um, that was fun. I was probably always going to be in film. My mom was a single mom. Uh, I was in San Francisco Bay Area, and after school, I went, at sixth grade, I remember, she would pick me up from school, take me to a movie theater, drop me off. I'd watch three movies. She'd go cocktail waitress at a, at a restaurant, and uh, she'd pick me up, and then I would go back to the bar with her, and I would sit at the piano with the piano guy and sing a bit, and then I would go home and sleep uh, when she got off work and go to school again. So, um, you know, the, the fact that I'm in this business is no surprise because I kind of grew up with it in my blood. Uh, Star Wars and you name it, you know, the, the, the whole hero's journey thing. So the creative thing is just something that I've always wanted to be involved in. Um, that led to, uh, I was singing in rock bands in San Francisco at 18 or 19. I had uh, um, the Actors Theater of San Francisco I did on the side of that and I had always done martial arts since I was a little kid. So um, it went, it segued from uh, acting, from music to acting. Um, and acting, uh, I was working with a bunch of stunt guys, J.J. Perry, Brad Martin, a bunch of great guys uh, who would uh, keep asking me, when am I gonna be a stunt guy? And I was like, no, 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 I'm an actor. I'm, I'm, I'm Actors Theater of San Francisco, I'm a thespian. And, but I would be doing martial arts movies and loving it, but I wanted to be a Van Damme. I wanted to be, you know, one of those guys. And um, there was only one of those guys, so it didn't happen. But what did happen, uh, is that I, um, I was like, maybe this whole stunt thing isn't a bad idea. Uh, and it became a career, a great, a great path. Um, and you know, I, the, the bonus to my career has been in movies like Green Lantern or Pirates 2 or Drive, um, where I, a lot of stunt guys don't like doing dialogue. I came from doing dialogue. So I was always the guy who was like, Who, who's willing to do these two seat like, Me, I know. And, and that became this kind of niche that was my thing to, uh, to speak and, and then get my butt kicked. When my daughter was at school, she, her friends would say, because I would be away a lot working, and she, they would say to her, uh, she'd say, oh, mum's not home, or you can't stay over tonight because mum's away, so I'm staying with a friend or my dad's there or, you know, whatever. Um, and eventually they would say, well, what does your mum do? And she would tell them the truth and say she's a stunt woman. And none of her friends ever believed her. Uh, the friends that didn't know me and hadn't met me, and uh, they thought she was lying and making up stories. So after a while, she stopped saying that. And she used to tell them that I worked in an office <laughs> because she realized nobody would believe her. So she thought, I won't say that, but that was true. Um, and the other thing was when I started my training, 
Uh, as I said with my daughter, I lived at home with my parents for a while while it was throughout the training. And when I really, my father really understood that I was totally blinkered for the stunt work and would do this no matter what after the photographer told me about it. That was it, totally blinkered and focused. And he said, I need to have a chat with you. So let's go out in the car and go for a drive away from the house. And I thought, oh no, what have I done wrong now? What's happened? And he said, you need to get yourself a proper job. You need to get this rubbish out of your head about being a stunt woman and get a proper job. You've got a daughter to be responsible for. You need to earn decent money and look after her. And this is just pie in the sky and it's ridiculous and you need to get yourself a proper job. So I listened and listened and said, but it is a proper job. No, no, no. But he, like me before I met the photographer, had no concept of what it was about because he had no involvement in the industry. Anyway, I continued and didn't listen to him as usual, I never did. And then years later, when I completed the training and started working, I would invite my mum and dad onto set if it was okay to do so, if we were away on a location and it was somewhere local to where they lived. And they became so proud of me and my dad before they, they're both dead now, but before he died. And uh, he, he just was bursting with pride. I'm an old fart. I've been doing it for a long time, you know, and it's been, if somebody said to me, what would you do differently? I've had a fantastic time. When they screw the lid down on my coffin, all you have with you is the memories. All this is something that we, we look after for somebody else, the next generation, you know, this house, the everything it's just things we work in a great business people think it's like being paid for playing cowboys and indians and to a certain extent it is when you're a young stunt performer and the stunt coordinator is taking the responsibility and he's telling you what to do and you're going to ride the horse or you know ride the motorcycle up the thing or you're going to fall out the window whatever it is that you're doing it's great fun but you're gonna get the bruises and you're gonna get the bang, but it's great fun. As you get older and you take more responsibility and you have to look out for their lives, that too is challenging and very exciting and uh, thing. But in the end, we're a team making one final product. And rather like in the army, you rely on your mates in the section. You know, if you're under fire, you're, you're relying on other people, you're relying on artillery or you're relying on air power, whatever it is, in order to get the job done. In our industry, it's the same. Every single person has got something to put into it and we have to remember that. But it's great. We get paid, we get paid for having fun, for going around the world sometimes and things. But in the end, when they say action, you've got to be on the money. You've got to be right there and you've got to be concentrating and, and you've got to produce just for those few seconds. You may be traveling for two days to get there. You may be rehearsing for a week to get there. Then when that, when that, when that first assistant says action and the shot is lasting for maybe 10 or 15 seconds and you've put two weeks into that, then you've got to be on the money. And that's challenging, that's fun tremendous responsibility but there's nothing like it when it's they say cut great job satisfaction oh, unbelievable oh which movie um on harry potter three or four i believe it was i think it was three uh, Harry is flying his broomstick and uh, the Dementors uh, make him pass out during the Quidditch match and he falls from a great height. So I had to do lots and lots of high falls out the top of a film stage at Shefton Studios. Um, it was a really good day, jumping out of the roof every day into an airbag, doing somersaults and twists and rotates on the way down. That was a really good job, really enjoyed it. 
Um, I went to Morocco on Prince of Persia and got to travel and work at the same time. It was a really good life experience. So yeah, I mean, every day is different in the stunt industry. Every day is a new challenge and, 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 and something to be achieved. And it's always like, it's always entertaining. You're never bored. And I'll always say, if I miraculously was to find a miracle cure, I would go back to work again because I loved my job that much. Yeah. Oh, sorry, man. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry, Ryan. That was the job that I did. There was the risks that I took, and you know, I understood the risks that I took, and unfortunately, I'm wearing the other side of it now. But no regrets, you know, life's for living, isn't it? Camouflage your netting around here because that house is being built, there's a new house being built there. See, I can't open doors, I can't open doors, I can't do that with no hands. So I designed this house so it all works off of my iPad. Has anyone said that? Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's cookies are parrot. <laughs> <laughs> like to think that they knew uh, we'd worked <laughs> sorry about this Pussycat this is not the way we do this little man you're going to have to look, I'll just give him a little <laughs> thing and then he'll go away right Did Lorraine come back? She said she'd come she, in. She's supposed to be around the pipe. She said she'd come back last week. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. We've left Lorraine yet? Yeah. Right. Twins, man. Twins. Send me to the power of work, to the power of work. To dreams and now. They run up to me and say, oh, oh, what's this? Are you a stunt woman? Yes, yes. <gasps> what do I have to do to be a stuntman? And the parents would come along, grab them, take them away and not let them come back. <laughs> say, I don't think so. <laughs> and the parents were horrified that the, the thought of their children possibly wanted to be stuntmen or women. And um, I, not, I don't think, I think a couple of parents were interested to know. And I said, so would you be happy for your son or daughter to perform? Oh, no, no, no. I'm only asking to be polite. They're definitely not going to do this. <laughs> so I never got asked back again. I didn't go back to the school. <laughs> I think the parents complained, said you shouldn't have had her there. You're encouraging them. <laughs>